If you couldn't tell by now, this video is sponsored by LG and they were nice enough to actually send me this LG 34 inch ultra wide monitor that is going to replace one of my monitors in my main setup, which is going to be really, really exciting. I can't wait to try this out, so I'm going to set it up now. Yeah, we'll see what I think of it. All right, so now let's get this absolute beast set up on this. Let's switch out this monitor here for the new one. So that's the monitor now set up and I think it turned out pretty good. I wasn't expecting me to be able to have both this monitor and this other monitor here uh, on the same stand because the arms aren't that long. But as you can tell it worked. Super happy. Okay, so now for the things that I kind of think about when choosing a programming monitor myself. And the main ones that I kind of think of are the size of it, the resolution of it, and then also, of course, the price of it. And those are like the three main things that I use to actually choose the monitor that I want to use. And I would say that the size-wise, you want something that's pretty wide because usually as a programmer you want to be able to use several different windows at once. So you want to go for something that's either quite wide, like I would say at least 27 inches or something like that. That's like the minimum, I feel like, as, at least for a monitor, if you want to have a monitor specifically for programming. And if you're gonna buy a new one and not just take one that you have laying around, then I would go for something that's like 27 inches because that's a pretty good uh, size. And it's also something that works really well for like adding a second monitor because I think that most programmers will wanna use like a dual monitor setup. That's just to be able to like have different things on different screens. Like for instance, I usually use this screen for web browsing. So this is like my main screen, which is now the LG ultra wide one and that's basically the screen that I use for most of my coding tasks if you will and then the second screen is what I use for like browsing so usually you'll be googling different things and like looking things up at Stack Overflow or just listening to music so that's like what I mainly use my second monitor for it's like an extra monitor an extra space to kind of use for those things which kind of allows me to not have to switch windows all the time i feel like it's also easier to kind of dedicate one monitor to one specific thing and then have the other monitor for something else but i think that the first monitor that you should go for is like a 27 inch so that's if you have the money to spend on it and if you're gonna buy a new one then i would go for a 27 inch as your first one and then I would go to maybe adding a second one as like a dual monitor setup in the future. So that would be like my aim would be to go for a dual monitor setup. And that's basically just because usually you'll be able to afford like the first monitor and then it'll go a little while and then you have money to spend on a second monitor as well. And that's why the dual monitor setup kind of works really well, I think. And that kind of goes into the price point. You want to have something that's kind of within your price range. And that's where also like going for an ultra wide monitor as your first monitor could be a good idea if you have the money to spend on it, but you don't feel like buying two separate monitors. And it's also kind of nice to just have one monitor that you can do all different things on. For instance, on this monitor, you can have like three, I think it's like A4 paper screen. I don't know what you call it, but in, in English, but I think it's Swedish, we call it like A4 paper. It's just your regular paper size. So you can basically have like one, two, three A4 papers on this monitor, which means that you can have like a document, you can have a text editor, and you can have a browser window open at once. And also you could have one half of the screen dedicated to like browsing and one half of the screen dedicated to like coding and doing all those sort of things, productivity type tasks. So essentially I would go for as wide as you can get within your price range. And then if you know that like you have a budget that's gonna be well suited for like a 27 inch or something like that, then I would go for a 27 inch high quality monitor and then wait and save up for a second monitor as well. It's something that really improves your quality of life when you're with the computer a lot because having a second monitor is just really really useful it was something that I didn't use for a while and then once I added that second monitor it felt really good to have that second space to just have all the things that you usually end up bringing up anyway like the web browser 
and all of those things without having to actually switch between the different windows. Okay, so that's kind of the main thing that I would look for is just what kind of size I can afford and go for like the biggest size that you can afford within a certain limit like you want to have it something that actually fits your space as well because i know that the concern with a lot of people is like they don't have the space to actually fit a super wide screen there's like 49 inch monitors as well so those kind of monitors get to the point where it's too wide to kind of fit into your space but i do feel like this like 34 inch monitor that kind of fits most spaces i think so that's why i think that the 27 inch monitors is like a really good starting point because 27 inches fits most spaces and it kind of is also enough to get you away from that like what you may be used to which is like a laptop kind of screen size so 27 inches will feel like you have so much real estate to move around with and it'll make a huge difference from going from like a laptop screen or a smaller screen size and it also allows for that ability to add a second monitor if you want as well I've seen people do like the vertical monitor setup I don't really know if many people actually maybe one of you guys can tell me if you actually use a vertical monitor i feel like that's something that kind of looks cool in images but i don't feel like there's too much use for it a lot of people talk about like okay you can scroll through a lot of code or you can see a lot of code if you have a vertical monitor set up i feel like it's something that looks cool but isn't super useful and so for the next point which is like resolution i would say that just go for the best resolution that you can afford and that's again something that isn't super important like with a HD monitor or a 1080p monitor you can see like it's really high quality and it's really difficult to actually tell the difference actually at least for me maybe my sight is really bad but I can't really tell a huge difference between a 1080p monitor and a 4k monitor and usually you get a 1080p monitor really really cheap compared to a 4k monitor so to me I usually end up going for the 1080p because I never really feel like I don't have enough resolution if that makes sense and I know that this is something that a lot of people talk about as well which is like the resolution is important for when you're writing code because then you can see the text more clearly I have used 4k monitors now I think both of these are 1080p monitors and I don't really see a big difference between them I never even think about it so that's why I would say you could save the extra money and just go for a 1080p monitor and that way you might be able to afford two monitors straight away Okay, and as far as the price of the actual monitor goes, the way that I would look at it is if you imagine that we have like a diagram here or a graph here, and this would be a very non-wide monitor. Up here we would have a really wide monitor, and here we have the price that you can afford, and here we have a price that you cannot afford. So if you imagine that there's a line between the least wide monitor towards the widest monitor, and then we have like the price that you can afford down to the price where you cannot afford then you can imagine that in the middle here somewhere is where you want to get to the actual monitor that's the monitor that you want to buy you want to buy the one that's as wide as you can get within your price range so that's kind of how I look at it as like a general guideline. It's very hard for me to give like, okay, this is a price that you should look for. But that's kind of what I do for most of the monitors that I look for is look for one that's as wide as I can get within my budget, essentially. I don't know if this is any good advice at all or if it's just like obvious advice, but I kind of like the graph idea here. All right, so as you can tell on this wide screen, you can have three windows open at once. You can have one window that's just for code. You can have one window that's like a browser window for stack overflow posts and you have a second window or a third window I mean open for just watching some random YouTube video pretty good So that's it for my comprehensive analysis of how you should choose a programming monitor. All right, and to finish off, I just want to thank LG for sponsoring this video. Right now, they're running their 2020 LG Ultrawide Festival all the way until the 3rd of November, where you can have the chance to win the ultrawide monitor that I got right here. I definitely think that you should go and enter to win it because I mean, why not? You can actually get this monitor for free. And I really do think that it's a great monitor for programmers. The space really helps improve your productivity by allowing you to see a lot more of what you're working on. And that really helps minimize time lost when 
switching between tasks. You can easily browse the web for answers and have your text editor of choice open and have some terminal windows next to that space. I think the monitor, keyboard and computer are the three most important tools to a programmer and those are the ones that you want to select with extra care and spend a little more money on because that's where you'll get the most bang out of your buck and that's also where you'll spend the most of your time. So go to lgultrawidefestival.com and check it out.